First property of equality is addition. And when you think the addition, property of equality, I want you to think of scales. Yes. Like um, these old school scales of justice. Just a sign for, what is it? What's the astrological sign? for that. If you know, comment below. You ready? You ready? You ready? We're talking about things being in balance. What happens if you had one of these old school scales and you dropped a little something something on this side? Dink! Whoa, wait. What if you took a little something something off this side? Dink! I'm a little teapot, short and stout. That's not what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and pour that last example out. What if we had had this thing and it was in balance? And we put the same thing on both sides. What would happen? It would still be in balance. What happens if we were in balance? And you take the same thing off of each side. You're still in balance. Speaking of imbalances, just kidding. Let's take a look at this, man. That's exactly what the addition property says. If you have two things being equal, you can add the same thing to both sides and they're still going to be equal. Dink. All right, fine. Let's get an example of something like this. I suppose we could have also added the opposite of C there too and that would have represented subtraction and it would have worked out the same. But let's see an example. Our first example comes by way of this guy. Over here, I'm not going for just the easy ones on this one. Nah, see? Here, what do I have? I'm trying to get X by himself. He's not by himself right now. Right now he's got mm, his almost a whole friend. Well, he's a quarter of a friend. He's one fourth. What do I want to do? I'm going to go through and I want to take the same thing off of each side to maintain my equality. So here we go. X plus one fourth. And then I need to take the opposite off of there. Why? Because it's the additive inverse. The additive inverse is the number that when added to the number, the sum is none. What? The additive inverse. It's the number that when added to the number, the sum is none. Oh boy. How do I get rid of a positive one fourth? I subtract that one fourth off of there. I need to take it off. But what you do on to one side, you must also do on to the other. It's the first of your golden rules. I took a quarter off this side, I must also take a quarter off of that side. That's not a quarter, but that is. All right, so now what? Here, that's the additive inverse. That's the number that when added to the number, the sum is none. Moreover, divide, and you're left with x, and then on the right, can you add those fractions the way they are? Nah, see, what do I need? A common denominator. And what would a common denominator be if you had one? Yes. See these? My common denominator is going to be these. Four, sure. So I'm taking that minus one half, and I need to multiply that by a magic one. If I can multiply once, then I can multiply twice. What am I gonna multiply that two by to get a four? Sure. I need to multiply it by a two over two. Ooh. Or the magic one. If I can multiply once, then I can multiply twice. And then what? I'm still going to have that minus one-fourth on there. I need a common denominator in order to add those numerators. So then my x is going to be, wait for it, wait for it. Knock, knock. Who's there? How do you multiply the fractions? Straight across. That's numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So then I'm going to find that I have a minus two fourths. Do you want me to reduce that? If you reduce that, you'd be back there. And that's not the desired effect. And then that's minus one fourth. Why? Because that one fourth is still there. Now that I have the same denominator, what can I do to their numerators? Adam. There has to be somebody out there named Adam. Anyways. Okay. Now that you have the common denominator, what are you going to do? Adam. We're going to add their numerators. Yes, this is minus 2, minus 1, dividido, 4. 
So then, my X is going to turn out to be, wait for it, wait for it. Minus 2 minus another 1 is minus 3 over 4, sure. So then my X turns out to be a minus 3 fourths. But if you don't believe me, check it. Throw it back up into the original. Minus 3 fourths plus a fourth, is that going to be 1 half? I do believe, and you should definitely check that on your own time. Now I find another example over here. Whoa, does it look like I'm wearing a hat? Okay, um, um, I got Y's on both sides, when I'm on one side, which side, don't care. There's two types of people in this world. There's left-siders, where the variable always has to be on the left. And I get that. You've been trained and ingrained in that way. Or there's also positive people that say, my variable needs to always be positive. And I believe that we can appease both of those people at the same time. What do we find? I'm trying to get my Y's on one side. I need to back that math up. I need Y's on... I got Y's on both sides, when I'm on one side, which side? Don't care. Why don't we get rid of that guy? Let's put it all to the left, to the left. Yes. Ready? 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 There's that hat again. Um, um, I need the additive inverse. Additive inverse is the number that when added to the number, the sum is none. What are we doing? We're using the additive property of equality, and here we go. I want to get that guy over there. Why? Because then this Y is going to be positive because that's bigger? Well, that's one reason. And Y's on the left. Left-siders. Subtract off of point two Y. And as long as I take the same thing off of each side, I am going to maintain my equality. Now, I don't like this notation. There are things you do when you're small, and there are things you do when you're tall. But I've realized in the <clears throat> many years I've been doing this, I can't fix you. And this is the way you like it, so, hmm, here we go. Ready, 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 ready. Uno, punto, dos. Be really careful with that second word. Menos, punto, dos, is going to be one Y. One Y, oh, one Y. Why? Because we can line up those decimal places and subtract straight on down. The signs are different. So you subtract and you associate the sign with the bigger, and it turns out to be numero one. And then, over, oh, minus four is equal to a minus four. Now we need to use our additive property once more. What am I saying? I need to get rid of that minus four. What is the additive inverse of minus four? The additive inverse is the number that when added to the number, the sum is none. What do I add to minus four in order to get none? Four. Sure. So then, I add a 4 to this side, and I add a 4 to that side, because what you do onto one side, you must also do onto the other. So then, I don't need to write that 1 in front of that y. Why? Because it's implied. So then, I'm going to have y, and um, on the right, divide. Uh-oh. Minus 4 plus 4. Nothing. But if you don't believe me, Check it! Throw it back up in there. Zero, uh-huh, you have a minus four. Zero, uh-huh, a minus four. Minus four equals minus four. Check! Ha-ha! Sucker!